<laughs> Susan? Someone smashed the box. What box? The money box. We'd had that for so many years. Why did they smash it? Well, I don't know. Look at this place. All divided. Everyone anxious and at each other's throats. I'm heartbroken. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Okay. Guess I'll see you later then. As if it matters. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Mrs. Adler? You okay? Peachy. You sure? No, I ain't sure. You still working? Is anybody still working? The whole goddamn place full of people bickering, fighting, and lying. It makes me real sad. I know. I need someone to ride with me. Do what? Finish off them of Driscoll's. I hear the last of them is holed up at Hanging Dog Ranch. I don't have it in me no more. I saw a calm swing. I, I just don't care. I was a married woman. You know what they did to me and to my husband. Like you're the only one of these fools that I trust. I've got to do this. Tell you what, I'll do it. But there's something you could help me with. Abigail, Jack, John, make sure they make it. I mean, this whole thing is pretty much done. But when the time comes. Or how do you mean? When the time comes, you help them. What do you mean? I mean, help them escape. When I. You know, you and me. We're more ghosts than people, but them, they, they could... I know. Of course I will. Thank you, Arthur. You want to ride with me now, or meet me up at Hanging Dog Ranch when you can? <whistles> Thanks, Arthur. Okay, come on.
Fine morning for a killing. Huh. Hey. You seen anything down there? Yeah, I think there's a bunch of them down there. I'm mostly drunk. For one of them, it's a fat fellow with a beard. Him? He's mine. Okay. It's a big ranch. Run down. Lots of folk there. But spread pretty thin. I'll set it off and then we'll... We'll take it from there. Take it from there? Okay. So, no real plan then. Oh, I got a plan. Now come on. I know that woman. She was with Dutch.
Yeah. He was a good man, my Jakey. We was always sweet on one another. I'm sure. Yeah. I miss him every day, every moment. Uh, they turned me into a monster, Arthur. But my memories of him, they still pure. No, I ain't even got that. Aside from my Jake, you're the best man I've known. I know the company you keep. The competition ain't too fierce. <laughs> We, uh, we should get away from her. Yeah. I think I need to be alone for a bit. I understand. You, uh, I want to get yourself cleaned up. Thank you, Arthur. Long time, boy. Yeah.
feet sank. Don't put your hands there and push. Come on, come on, show me something. You better not drop it. You better not. Come on, you pair of cream pies. Do you want this rally to happen or not? <laughs> Have some respect. Just leave me be. Ain't even worth it. That's how you gonna be. Hey there, partner. 
Good to see someone who ain't afraid of hard work. Things don't do themselves. Well, all the best. Bye now. <laughs> Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Evening. Hey, y'all. Good evening. I have to say, life is pretty good. Hello there, and welcome. Glad to hear. Oh, dear. Have you come down with the flu as well, sir? Flu? No. What are you talking about? Nothing. It's just been going around, that's all. Anyway, how can I help you? Nothing like a fresh start. Take care now. <clears throat> Hello, ma'am. How do you do? Hey, a new face. Welcome. You like whiskey? I, I mean, who don't? Take a look on that stand by the door there. Mmm, yeah, that's something special. All right, let me lay my eyes on it. I thought I was generous allowing our stable boy to sleep under the new canvas of the wagon. But I found several sticky bits on my last trip. He will need replacing. Well, that comes as no surprise. Say, you, you don't look so good, partner. You all right there? Well, I've been better, but uh, that's how it goes. Well, I hope you improve soon. Season our return from the grave, I am greeted with new furnishings in the parlor that I have been profoundly hinting at all year. Such a tragedy that our schedules never align. Mm hmm. Well, then.
right then. I heard one of them damn. All right. Long walk to the next place, though. If you get my meaning. Surely not the first time. Hey, folks. Why, hello there, sir. How do you do, sir? It's all right. Change my mind. Yeah. Easy now. Calm Whoa. down on this right quick now. I oughta ditch y'all. Can't do shit right. There'll be other showing up if you'll just be patient. Horse shit! There'd be 25 people here. Patience. There's nobody here. Dang it, this is a lost cause. Oh, hey, come on, careful. Man. That's dangerous. Yeah, asshole. Jeez. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus, did the ropes come? Oh, Run shit. for its bridge. There we go.
Mister. Hello there. Here for the show? Can I buy a ticket, please? We'll be starting soon, just inside the tent there. so that even gravity itself can be mastered. An amazing and bewildering spectacle, but I assure you everything I am about to share with you is true. Now, we are all familiar with the potential cruelties and injustices of travel by horse, wagon, or locomotive. You are like to be beset upon by the infinite savagery of wicked men or bloodthirsty beasts that lurk in the bogs and plains of these tormented lands. But what if I told you for a certainty that man will soon be traveling across the heavens with wings like a bird? I am sure you think I am full of untruth. But I have not drank a pint of liquor in over a year, and I will do my utmost to demonstrate the veracity of my claims. For a hundred years, steamboats have engaged in passage along our great rivers. But a man by the name of Cecil H. Peck is in the process of inventing a steamboat for the sky. The only limitation on its speed at which the porter can shovel on more coal. But parts of the country where coal is scarce, or 
helicopters can be used in the skies to hasten your voyage and keep the passengers active while they travel. Near Pittsburgh, there lives a telegraph man named Aldous Kinnear, who each evening after supper retires to his barn and dons the wings of a giant creature and takes to the heavens. You will be delighted to know he has traveled considerable distances, as many as 45 miraculous feet. Unfortunately, on his record-breaking flight, he knocked over a lamp and was consumed by flames. His two boys, Percival and Charles, have promised to continue their dear pa's legacy of sky flight. A whole heap of men are fashioning contraptions to take us to the heavens. A flying machine powered by a trusty donkey. Once you arrive at your destination, you can mount the saddle and ride away. With this incredible contraption, one can enjoy some popcorn and have the best view in the house at the next flogging or lynching. Stagecoach robberies will soon be a relic of the past when we enlist our animal friends as couriers well out of range of man's shooting irons. But the most remarkable thing I have to reveal to you comes from a northern man called Moss John Nichols. Imagine travel without ever getting into a saddle. No doubt you have heard accounts or seen in person the majesty of flight achieved by performers in the circus. Mr. Nichols has perfected the Sky Cannon. Passengers simply walk up the steps, relax into the barrel, and are transported with great flourish to the destination of their choice. The lame and infirmed who have been ravaged by scarlet fever or polio can once again call upon their loved ones. These newlyweds are all grown up, turned 17, said their wedding vows and are off to visit New York City. And some very forward thinkers have told me that within 10 years, dear audience, any of us can take a holiday trip to the moon. I must disclose I'm quite partial to this mode of transport. Ships and horses are like to sour my stomach. The future is in the skies, my friends. Look to the heavens. We are going to join him up there by and by. Come again. Hey there, Val. Can you help me? Could you use some help finding my way home? I can't make heads or tails of where I'm at. <laughs> I live in front of the saloon next to the freight station. You know if I'm heading in the right direction? Morning. Not a gentleman. You're a scoundrel, and quite frankly, talking like that is exactly what I'd expect from you. You blackguard, you foundling, my dear I, I told you quite clearly that this man, this creature whom the fates have decided to call my brother, is nothing but a spreader of lies and a believer of nonsense. Our mother had a son, and then his bed put a leech. Passing the house gave her a boy, and she kept him. People have tried to drown him many times, but of course, 
Howdy. Morning, friend. Some real beautiful country around this area. That a fact? Well, I'll leave you to it. You take care. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Oh, I remember you. Lost a bit of weight there, it looks like. You should get yourself over to Smithfield's for a hot meal. If I wanted a doctor, I'd have gone across the street. Of course, I didn't mean anything by it. So how can I help you today? Can I get a room for tonight, please? Room's all yours. Head on up. Would you like some extra help there? Sure. Sounds good. Good. Now don't you worry about a thing. Let me know if you'd like a bit of an extra scrub anywhere. I'll be out of your hair in no time. So how's it going? Fine, thank you. Some parts of me probably ain't been this clean in months. Let's just keep that between us and these four walls, shall we? <sighs> you gotta treat yourself sometimes, I reckon. <laughs> yes, indeed. You seem nice. You are making me blush, you. Doesn't get much better than this, right? It was a pleasure. All the best to you. That shopkeep across the way has been selling out his room for cheap. But I hear there's goddamn sidewinders hiding out in his pillows. Why are you acting like this? It ain't that bad. 
Need to freshen up a bit? Got a bathing service. 